your bag will get stolen your phone will probably get picked up by somebody else so uk is quite corrupted in itself yeah. so i went to an agency to me the scholarship liya hai are you taking any part time job i'm a yoga instructor i was really really lucky because i got a 4000 pounds that's a lot yeah. my meditation and my yoga also took a big kick start like <laughs> Oh, there's a great network of like it's only 20 hours a week that you can work a lot of people get punched in the face and basically like a no pain no gain kind of a situation <laughs> My name is Jheel and welcome back to our channel. Today we are here with a very 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 special guest of mine, one of my best friends, Radhika, and we're currently in Glasgow. So, let's get on with the video. Radhika, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, hi everyone. As you all know, I'm Radhika. <laughs> and uh we're at University of Strathclyde right now where I'm currently studying. I'm from Mumbai, India and this I'm doing a master's course here uh, from September 2022 and it's about to end in like a few months so I'm really excited to do this interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on. So as you know our curriculum and the way we've learned our education is quite different from the way we studied in the UK right now. So do you think you faced any difficulties or like did you have to give any additional exams? Tell me about your experience. Um so I was studying in KC college and I did my major in psychology uh with bachelor's of arts in psychology and I gave IELTS as the only exam that was external uh they did look at my grades that I how I performed in the last year of my degree which is super important and uh IELTS was I think people who already have uh, studied in an English medium school uh kind of have uh, an upper hand on it yeah, towards it's it it's easier basically it's easier to give the exams you don't really have to do anything much but i did take like a small course for it uh and it was kind of like to know the structure to kind of yeah. know what the kind of things that they're expecting and everything exactly so i did that but apart from that i don't think i really prepped for the exam and i got like the minimum grade you're supposed to get which was 7.5 to get in strathclyde yes and um so yeah that's it i think that there was not much of a difference i'll agree that there is a lot of drastic change in um the way you kind of give your exams the mm-hmm. way the curriculum is yeah. in the uk and it's more of like especially when you come from an undergrad to a masters mm-hmm. but even like the people who have been studying in uk for even bachelor's phase is kind of like a uh, switch kind of like a say. switch yeah, yeah i would say like it was it's more like uh, everyone feels it but i feel like people who come from different backgrounds in different countries feel like a little bit more because the practical knowledge that they have been applying in so it's kind of different i would say i agree understand me definitely so coming to academic achievement it's a really big thing getting to like one of these Russell Group universities and like stuff like that so what were your grades like how did you perform in your exams in your bachelors what was the minimum requirement for university of strathclyde tell me all about it um so my uh, cgpa was quite nice it was 8 i think in the last semester and 8.5 in the previous ones so um i would say that was quite easy for me like they don't require anything more than 8 i'm guessing in strathclyde um and even if you do have it that's great because then you're open to more scholarships, scholarships. and yeah. uh, more opportunities but i think it's more about your sop and how you kind of form it so i went to an agency and they kind of helped me do the whole process and uh, helped and guided me about what is kind of expected in um the in the university in general to like kind of say what you want to say about yeah. yourself basically so the, w- the w- it required like one statement of purpose and uh, two letter of recommendations um and your IELTS score so that was the minimum Obviously. requirement they didn't really explicitly say anything about the grade that they expect mm-hmm. but um i think i was fine so well coming to work experience it's always a better idea to like you know usually take a gap before starting your masters get some experience in your field and especially coming from a psychology background sure. i think they would look at something like that so is that something you looked into did you do something um 
yes i forgot to mention that i'm studying msc in psychology <laughs> uh so uh that's what i'm saying uh studying like msc in clinical health psychology and as the psychology students know how difficult it is to get an internship everywhere in the everywhere world. uh it's the same in even in even in uk if you go to see and it's quite a challenge to kind of network your way through and um kind of land on a internship even if you're it's volunteering work but um mm-hmm. so what i did was uh, after i completed kc i was unsure so i definitely enrolled for the masters course in kc and i got through but i had different plans in my head in a way yeah. but that was just my backup option if, in case i didn't get into the university and i was um i was interning with like more like a managerial job in the psychology field but like i was not really yeah but know, it's still your field so that's still my field that's still a plus so i did that for a bit for a few months and i was also counts in the counseling field also i was kind of interning with a counselor in mumbai so that is also a good additional I addition to your like, cv yeah. I, i could so say if you reach out to a lot of counselors they may give you a spot on the this thing and then th- that's that's how it's like important to grab your lors in place definitely um, so you mentioned that kc was one of like you know your backup option then you had something else planned out or planned out for your life so do you think uh, like was strathclyde one of your top choices of universities or did you just apply to strathclyde itself or how many other universities did you apply for just as a backup option you know Um I applied to one um university except Strathclyde but Strathclyde was definitely one of my like the first choice of, mm-hmm. that I wanted to select it's mainly because of the course that it offers and this course is not really offered in this kind of structured anywhere else mm-hmm. um except the states um if i'm not wrong but like state was states was too long for me to go for so i was sticking to a one year master course absolutely um which is why i selected strathclyde and a uh, clinical health psychology kind of the whole structure and everything was kind of similar to this one other course which was in uh dublin ireland mm-hmm. uh at trinity yeah oh uh, yes but i did not really like i got in after strathclyde when i'd already accepted my um offer letter and stuff like that but then i was i, I was thinking about it but then i was quite sure about where i wanted to go so yeah i'm here so like tell me about your course um structure and your modules how does it take place do you have practicals what what's it about like? um i think the whole course structure changes every year for each kind of batch i would say but like the main structure included a lot to do with like clinical psychology yeah. health psychology neuropsychology these were the main three domains wow that's really interesting yeah so that's why i really like this course where it kind of gives me like a more just all approach to like everything that's going on and um also it kind of specializes you in like there is one module that i'm studying right now in therapy mm-hmm. and um uh, like you know a lot of lot to do with like there is one module to do with research but even that is very well structured in a way to it's not it's not that difficult how people Understood. usually are scared of research yeah about. so and plus the dissertation of course because that's the most important important part of like your whole curriculum yeah. yeah and i think um all the supervisors here i've spoken to my some of my friends as well and they're really really helpful and they kind of guide you in every way to help you in a way understand the whole research part of psychology yeah हाँ आई नो तुम तो बड़ी स्मार्ट हो ना तुमने तो स्कॉलरशिप लिया है तो टेल मी अबाउट द स्कॉलरशिप दैट यू गॉट आई थिंक इट वॉज जस्ट एन ई मेल दैट केम थ्रू एंड स्टार्ट दैट वॉज ऑफरिंग स्कॉलरशिप बिटवीन टू टू थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड पाउंड टू फाइव थाउजेंड पाउंड एंड आई हैड राइट अ पर्सनल स्टेटमेंट अबाउट इट एंड आई डेड एंड इट वॉज क्वाइट नाइस बिकॉज आई गॉट फोर थाउजेंड पाउंड that's a lot i got that scholarship which is i think i think it's like 10 to 12% of my tuition uh, fee so i think that was a great start 
in general which i was really glad about mm-hmm. so that's the scholarship i got yeah any little thing helps especially with the yeah. funding being so he- hefty for like international students especially Definitely. i think the yeah. prices for international students the international fees section fees it's, it's literally three times the yes, definitely the people like, for uk yeah, yeah. Uh, so even for my course the um fees for uh, if i'm not wrong the fees for uh in house like basically uk students and ireland students was uh, i think 8000 pounds and mine was approximately 19000 pounds that's such a big yeah. difference so yeah so i think that that kind of makes uh, plus the accommodation plus the uh, your living cost expenses of living, yeah everything kind of counts and kind of adds up so yeah, yeah 4000 pounds like look kind of small in front of it but it's definitely a huge help for sure so like traveling to the uk is a whole new experience especially alone by yourself so what was like your first impression upon landing here going to university taking a tour maybe how did you feel um i think to be very honest when i landed in um uk it was quite a hassle with my flights and yeah. it being misplaced as i totally I remember, remember. and it was such a huge ordeal honestly like i had cried for more than 2 hours <laughs> and as well as i <laughs> um because of the flights getting delayed so i think everyone who is kind of signing up for it like like my parents were really supportive and like kind of made me like look from a different perspective and kind of like constantly telling me that it's okay like you're going to have fun you're going to look back on things yes. so everything take everything as like a new experience yes. i think a learning step basically yes definitely because like everything is not going to be so pitch perfect into your road and your pathway of your life so i think you need to always be prepared prepared for hurdles cry a bit but it's going to be fine it'll be fine uh, in the yeah. end <laughs> yeah so i think that's that's the thing but as soon as i landed i instead of landing in glasgow i landed in aberdeen, aberdeen. right and um <laughs> Uh it was it was crazy and I had a lot of fun though um uh, because as soon as I came here because I had to like all these stories to share with everyone so I I, I was kind of like cracking jokes and everything I had one joke to crack <laughs> You want to deal with the pain <laughs> <laughs> Yeah definitely Yeah but how was Strathclyde in general like your I first did, impression I I did not get to attend the induction at all oh, because no. of my delay of flights but uh, it was in general really good because i kind of uh, made new friends here i kind of made so many friends in my accommodation in general yeah and um but in uh, but at the same time everyone really has to understand in a way that everything is not going to be that easy yeah so every time it's just going to be like oh you have to cook food or you have to like do dishes or you have and to like everything by yourself everything plus like people coming from especially india we have helpers at our place yeah. and uh, it's usually our moms doing all the work and uh-huh. everything but here uh, i feel like the kids, privilege <laughs> i feel like kids are really different in general because they go away from their parents at 18 so oh. it's really sad but in a, it, in general i feel like it made me really dependent i'm a world class chef at this point of time absolutely <laughs> as you should be in just studying this is what we do right yeah <laughs> but in general even the course is amazing because it's kind it's quite guided there were for you for sure like a few hurdles in the middle like the uk strikes of course mm. how can we not talk about how that could... so um those things definitely kind of like created a little bit of like gaps in the middle mm-hmm. but like in general the whole course was like quite supported it's not something to be scared about is all i'm saying mm. so coming to like university and clubs and societies i'm sure there's like many who would wish to join so tell me about your experience with those um personally i was not really uh, into any clubs since i was like really young <laughs> anyways like i didn't really have much interest but i did sign up for the meditation and yoga club for sure and uh, i think i went for a meeting but like i didn't have so much time because i was already like working and Absolutely. everything so um that's it but i feel like there is uh, there are many societies from like each culture that you come up mm-hmm. with so there's the arab society there is uh, like suisa so suisa is a uh, Strathclyde Indian Association and it kind of has like a lot of events and I've gone to a few and like during Diwali or and Holi, Holi yeah. uh, so that that's quite like supportive but in general I feel like try going into the drama club as well or like 
poetry as well so some so you not only meet people from your own culture but like different cultures so you mm-hmm. kind of feel more uh you know it's like a lot of a lot of indians just come to uk and only jal along with like indians, indians. which is kind of Oh. Not the point of studying abroad, I would say. Exactly. You should so like mingle with of, new people. Because of like those small tours and like those small trips that I keep kept on taking, I made a lot of friends from like, uh, I would say Scandinavia and some from states, some from Canada. So a lot of people who actually come internationally, uh, kind of, uh, are in the same boat as you, and yeah. not just Indians in general. Uh, Absolutely. All my flatmates are Chinese, so like they're amazing. They keep on like. Brilliant. That's so great. So I feel like that the, the socialization part should not only just be your Indian group or Indian society. I mean, they're great. I love I love being like a part of like events and kind of uh, understanding. Mm-hmm. Oh, like people come mm-hmm. from different parts of your country as well. So, but like I feel like more than that, also there's a world outside it. Absolutely. So. University is great. Everything is going good. But what about your accommodation? Like, what are you doing about that? Um, I'm living in one of the accommodations right near the university, but it's not a university accommodation. It's a private one. Okay. Um, and I was really, really lucky to get this accommodation because yeah. you know the accommodation crisis and everything is killing in, in all parts UK, of UK yeah. in general. Um. And I feel like it's it's really nice that uh, a student accommodation, if you select, then it's more about like socializing with like a lot of other students as well, mm-hmm. rather than like you getting an apartment. But Absolutely. like there are so many generally social people who definitely do get apartments <laughs> and still are really social. <laughs> so I think both both have like pros and cons, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I think that's about it. Like I'm very lucky to have found this accommodation. Yeah, it seems great. So what's the rent structure like and stuff? Um, so I think it is depending on like what kind of room you get, mm-hmm. from ranging to like. Uh, one fifty a week to approximately let's say two fifty a week. So it depends on where you That's actually. That's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but for Glasgow, it's different. It's slightly more expensive compared to London, where I stay. So the base base rent of London starts from two hundred pounds in student accommodation. So it's definitely right. higher up well, coming from a city outside. Yeah, see. definitely. But, but like here, I feel like there are a lot of accommodations which like kind of offer a little bit of cheaper. Yeah. Uh, alternatives in a way because they're like a little bit far from the university or and something like that but I feel like it's all a personal choice where you want to go in yeah so it's great that you live really close to university so you don't have to commute that often or like that much I would say everything is covered by walks and maybe some days cycling some days but how else if you were to live in like a more sustainable accommodation a little further away how do you think you would commute in Glasgow um, I think I don't really know how to like commute that much because I don't really go out that much. But I feel like uh, whenever I do, there's a lot, there's a great network of like Cotrail, as we all know, because that's the connection between all the major major parts of the city. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also buses that run quite regularly. But uh, living near the university also means living near the city center for us, right. near Strathclyde. So it kind of is really good because um, makes you like connected not just to the university but like also the city center. So like things you want to do in the mm-hmm. George Square, everything like, is accessible. Everything is like right here. Yeah, so. and you walk everywhere, right? So that's a good workout. Yes, that's always <laughs> the <making> 10k. <laughs> yeah. So like describe your like monthly expenses. Like how would you structure out your months and like ration out your food and expenditures? How do you do that? Um, I think I. It depends on what kind of it. I feel like it's very personal mm-hmm. about like how you kind of structure out how much you want to spend in a in a month. So and it's not going to be consistent every time. Yeah. Uh, but I would definitely say that like stuff like going out uh, and eating is more expensive than cooking your own meals Mm -hmm. so I kind of like structure myself in a way that I can only eat like out twice in a week or maximum is twice in a week but also like kind of finding a like kind of small small like if you have if you're living with somebody else who have the same kind of taste and cuisine as you Mm -hmm. it's always getting easier because it's cheaper in a way and things don't go bad also like the small tricks you kind of for food of course and then for going out i think it depends on what kind of like 
you are as a person so if you want to like party and go out for a lot of trips and all of that so then you kind of have to figure out in your own way what you want to do and find like keep all those details or like find a new friend group <laughs> <laughs> so um that was a target at me <laughs> so i think it it is quite subjective and it kind of changes a lot i feel like so previously my expense if it was for like let's for example say uh i don't even know i didn't really count that much but let's say like 500 pounds a month but Fair. like now i feel like once i know i've figured out everything in my accommodation and like how i want to shop where yes. i want to shop from how i want to go out uh and i found like a neighbor also who cooks kind of the same yeah. food so it kind of like makes more sense to like little bit boil it down like 10 20% will come down for sure mm. in a way like you have to kind of like figure out your own yeah so i would say a rough budget would be like between 300 to 500 yeah i would say yeah, that. yeah definitely fair so i know it's quite an expensive affair coming from like india with the currency and the exchange rate is much different so do you take up any part time jobs for that uh so in the very start i was not really looking for jobs because i really wanted to focus on my studies but as soon as i got comfortable with um knowing what's going to happen mm-hmm. and like you know knowing the curriculum well and getting on top of all my classes <laughs> <laughs> so i started like looking for work uh in general but like on indeed and like a lot of shops and everything but i'm a yoga instructor as oh, yeah. you know i do so um i used to do a lot of classes back home and um i kind of approached the studio and they were they were honestly like very happy to get me on and Absolutely. i'm teaching at the studio now for a bit so i i don't think it's much really but i love doing the work so yeah. it's great and um i know you were asking me about the opportunities that the university provides yeah. well. and i feel like there are a lot of university opportunities um that they keep on posting about and it depends on what kind of um i don't know how to say it but like what kind of like stuff that interest you, you interest you yeah. and like also the qualifications matter yeah So in a way like they have usually small events and there's so many other apps if like people want to work like Hap and uh Indeed. Stint Stint yes I used so to So all these small small part-time jobs that really help uh kind of like getting those 60 70 pounds whatever you want that extra basically yeah. in your pocket so, Yeah definitely it kind of helps for sure but like um it also depends on what your end goal is in a way so if you're one are looking for like something according to your own field that's always a big plus because right. it's going to be in the end being on your cv yeah and it would help for future exactly activities. rather than earning like money right now you would yeah. rather have that on yeah, your cv yeah absolutely for earning more money in the future <laughs> <laughs> yeah um also like i think it's a very small amount of work that you can do in a week so i think it's yeah. like 20 hours um right because we're limited based on our brp yeah, yeah. so uh, it's only 20 hours a week that you can work anyway so you can't be employed full time in gen- in any way so i feel like volunteering opportunities according to your own field actually looking for full time jobs after you're done with your degree and all that really helps if you kind of want to stay in uk in the uk in Yeah and we do have a two year extension period for our visas yeah. as a work visa so I think if I'm not wrong it starts stopping from like September it is now right so of course finding jobs on campus or like jobs in general in the UK is quite hard so did your will your course help you like fuel your curriculum maybe and perhaps get placements in the future um so as far as i know uh, i think there is a counselor that kind of helps you mm-hmm. the career counselor mm-hmm. and there is a there is a portal which kind of kind of you keep on checking for right. updates that can give you opportunities for a full time job or um, anything like that i feel like once a master students gets done here there are a lot of phd opportunities as well yes so yes. they pay you in a way like it's minimal of course but like it kind of is um, according to your own costs mm-hmm. and it kind of covers everything it's basically like a no pain no gain kind of a situation <laughs> so i yeah, think, i get um, you but it's a three year uh commitment i would say and need to for at least yeah. for phd and uh especially for my course um uh even then there is there are a few lectures that kind of like make you aware about the courses that you can take up which kind of they're not like technically they're like learning with owning mm-hmm. um i would say and so the, there's i know as far as i know there's a cap course 
uh, you can apply to the NHS. Absolutely. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities, but of course, if you come with a lot of like work experience, if you come with a good degree and a good kind of will to learn, mm-hmm. and if you really want to like set out, yeah, in uh, UK, then it makes sense for you to kind of apply for so many things. Yeah. So tell me about your experience with the city, Glasgow in general. Like, how is the experience? How is the vibe? Tell me all about it. Um, I'm from Mumbai, so uh, everything except Mumbai is quite slow. As if you don't go to a big city, and it's definitely like quite different from the other big cities, I would say. Yeah. Uh, it for UK people, it's quite big of city with like a lot of people here. But for uh-huh. us Indians, of course, it's, it's very small. small and it's quite like underpopulated, I would say. <laughs> But uh, I feel like it was, but personally for me, it was quite a big of a detox. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like kind of making me very focused on what I want to do and what I really want to like achieve in life. Uh, I think my meditation and my yoga also took a big kick start from for me. I think I for personally for me it was quite like quietness and calmness all around yeah. me, which was sometimes deafening and sometimes really lonely in mm-hmm. a way. But I kind of learned how to appreciate the silence and, and staying alone basically staying alone all the time coming from like a joint family absolutely the noise and the clutter around you all the time for so sure. for me it was quite a drastic change uh, but honestly I loved it and, I, and my friend circle around me uh, is also quite like diverse so uh-huh. I get to learn a lot of things uh, from them I know so much about the different countries <laughs> in Europe at this point of time <laughs> And uh, even like doing the because Scotland is so beautiful. Beautiful. I took you so yeah. many places. We've and gone to like explored the whole of the Highlands and it's one of the prettiest places I've seen. We went to Oban and Glencoe. Amazing experience. It's it's not just that, but I feel like a lot of like experiences that you can get just by. I, I feel like when you come from India to travel here, it's super different than when you're in Glasgow and traveling everywhere. Yeah. And it's honestly such a great experience because yeah. it's new opportunities me, basically yeah definitely and like my friends are quite pushy about traveling as well so I kind of go everywhere I think when I came to London also I yeah. feel like I got really overwhelmed by the whole fact of like the fast and busy life yeah so I think once you kind of make the change it's quite difficult to go back to the busy, busy and life loud life yeah but um so it's quite co- like it's quiet and it's quite like nice and quaint but at the same time I feel like it depends on what kind of person you are. Yeah, so, yeah, so like I'm a city girl. I I don't think I could see myself setting her, but I could see you. But I feel like you also just know me. A lot of my other friends live the exact same life as you here because they do a lot of parties. Parties. There's, there's a bit of both sides. There's a bit yeah. of both sides here. I feel like it depends on what kind of person you are. It lets you choose what your personality is and like yeah. it kind of comes out in the way you want it to be absolutely so I feel like it's quite subjective yeah so as we're coming to the end of this interview there's just one last thing I would like to ask you is that is there any word of advice or suggestions that you would give to young aspirants coming to study abroad tell me <laughs> oh god <laughs> put you on the spot there <laughs> um, I think it is Again, I'm, I think I don't. I know I'm repeating this too many times, but I think it's quite subjective on what kind of goals, what kind of background, and what kind of culture you are in already, and what yeah. you want to be yeah. in general. So for each person, it's going to be quite different mm-hmm. in a way. So I think one very important advice is just that everything is an experience, and. Yeah. Uh, it's so important to constantly be aware of what is happening around you and what is happening inside of you as well because like a lot of experiences that you don't really expect in UK does happen here so your bag will get stolen your phone will probably get uh, picked up by somebody else so all this just doesn't happen in India so UK is quite corrupted in itself yeah. It just as we view India we've experienced so, all this yeah. all of this so I feel like it's it's quite like and plus you don't have that family support when you are in India so you don't have that kind of security that 
India you and your own home, home gives you. Mm-hmm. So uh, I feel like it's it's quite different. So constantly be aware of what's happening around you, and like don't settle for less. I feel like don't settle for whatever people give you shit here. Uh, give them back. Like yeah. honestly, it's, everything. It's you against exactly. everyone else. It's exactly. you alone. A lot of people get punched in the face in daylight. So I think everything is gonna be a learning experience for you, and you need to kind of be strong and. Um, kind of being very aware i would say like being super aware and centered with your own self um to kind of understand what's going on and constantly be seeking out for opportunities as well and not just being like oh i'll look at it later i'll look at it later constantly like look for opportunities grab onto new volunteering opportunities because yeah. they really help and i think jobs also for people who are looking for them constantly you need to check up it's not a uh, like a easy path to get even like a normal part time job uh it's it, it is difficult For i sure. know a lot of people who wanted it Absolutely. and couldn't get it so i think wherever you are can i make the most out of it and life will fall into place that's, that's it. it absolutely thank you so much for joining thank us you. today guys and i hope you had a good experience and if you do have any questions let us know in the comment section down below and we'll see you very soon bye bye